Hallelujah. It's yet another time that we are coming to you live again from Mount Zion Worship Center, Mombasa Nyali. And today is what we call our minister's lounge. I invite you to join us from wherever you are watching us from and tag a friend to tag a friend, like and share our stream, even as we encourage one another in serving the Lord. I know somebody has discouraged somewhere. Somebody has decided I'm not going back to church again. Somebody has decided I am not serving again. I want you to join in even as we check on the scriptures and see how would the Lord desire us to do it so that along the journey we are encouraged. Bow down your head and let's pray even as we begin. Father, we thank you. Speak to us. Strengthen us. Open our eyes, God, that we can see the end picture of why you have called us, that along the journey we will be encouraged to do that which is your will and that which is the purpose of our deliverance. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. My topic today is entitled The Co-Workers Assignment. Last time we shared on the things we're expecting this year, and I'm here to stir you up as a co-worker, somebody that is serving in one way or the other. Are you a Sunday school teacher? Are you a worship leader? Are you in the choir? Are you an usher? Are you in the security team? I want to encourage you, tune in. Tag another co-worker somewhere that you work together with. Invite them to enjoy this stream because indeed, I know the Lord has something in store for you and for me, even as I bring the word of God. The Bible says in Exodus chapter number 7 and verse number 16, Then say to him, the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has sent me to say to you, Let my people go so that they may worship me in the desert. But until now, you have not listened. Those were scriptures that actually God spoke to Moses to speak to Pharaoh in those days. Remember, the children of Israel had desired to get out of bondage and God promised them in Exodus chapter number 3 that he was taking them to a big land, a land that is flowing with milk and honey. But along the journey of their walk, they were supposed to serve the Lord. They were supposed to worship the Lord. And that word, worship the Lord in scripture, it actually means serving the Lord. So when we are singing songs, we are offering worship, but the song are not the worship is a part of the service God has saved us for a purpose he has delivered me and you for a purpose and our calling has an end goal our calling is that we've been called to a kingdom we have been called to a marriage supper we have been called to a wedding where God desires to consummate our relationship as a bridegroom and as a bride so that we can be able to have what we call the governmental transition of the current governance that is taking place where we are now in this world. We need to know what is of paramount importance for us to understand that the current world is under the rulership of the devil himself. First John chapter number 5 and verse number 19, the Bible says that we are of God, but this world is under the sway of the evil one. John 14 and verse number 30, the Bible says, I will not speak much more with you, for the ruler of the world is coming, and he has nothing in me. Look at Jesus Christ. He himself is calling the devil the ruler of this world. It is of paramount importance so that we know how we operate as believers in this world. And that's why God expects us to behave like sojourners, like pilgrims along the journey. Because this is not our home and this world is under another governance. Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse number 2, the Bible says, In which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according According to the prince of the power of the air of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience there is a spirit there is the power of the air there is the prince of Persia the devil himself is the one who is at work in this world and his work is well manifested in the sons of disobedience me and you once walked in disobedience at times by association and the choices that we make in our life we we find ourselves again associating ourselves with our previous father who is the devil and falling again into sin. That 
is why you would ever wonder how would Jesus call Peter get thee behind me Satan is because at that particular time Peter has associated himself with the father of this world and that particular time he was under the control of Satan himself. I want us to know that if you are born again and you do not yield yourself to the control of the Holy Spirit, to the control of scripture, to the control of God the father, then you will find yourself in association with the father of this world and at that particular moment being used of the enemy and that's why it's of paramount importance that we understand scriptures and the way God has provided them. And that's why Jesus praying for the disciples in the book of John 17. He is saying, God, I pray my father that you will not remove them out of this world, but I have kept them. I have preserved them. I pray that you will keep them. I pray that you don't remove them, but protect them because this world has hated me and the world will hate them. We are in a fallen world. We are in a world that is under the control of demonic powers from the heavenly place. Second Corinthians chapter number 4 verse number 4 again the Bible says in whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving so that they may not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. And for sure this is the work of the devil all the time. He would want to deceive our minds. He would want to deceive us about the word of God. He would want to deceive us about the promises of God. And that's why I am calling us to the attention of understanding that we are sojourners. We are in a fallen world. And we need to partner with God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, and you know, God the Son, that they can help us in our journey of faith that we do not fall in the deception of God this world. That having been said, we are seeing a picture where the children of God has been called out of the world, but they are under the canopy of the governance of a demonic government. My title today I have said is the co-workers assignment. I want us to understand that meanwhile, the believers have been called out of this world, which is under the sway of the wicked one, and they are engaged in four things. One, they are engaged in a journey. They are engaged in a race. They are engaged in a battle. And they are engaged in a work that they need to do as they continue with their journey to the promised land, to the kingdom that is being prepared for them. All these things are in preparation for the end picture. Remember, before the end picture is realized, because before the settling of the kingdom is established, and you know, before the marriage supper, before the wedding of the Lamb, there will be a judgment. And that judgment is a judgment that we will be judged on how we have engaged our journey in our journey of faith. And we will be judged on how we have ran our race. And that's why Paul, writing to the Corinthians again in 1 Peter chapter number 9 and verse number 27, he is saying, I am running to win. I am running for a prize. And he is saying, one thing that I do is that I subject my body under so that after preaching to so many people, I myself does not become a castaway. So we are on a journey. We are in a race. And in this race, there is a judgment ahead of us. On a our journey there is a judgment ahead of us and there is a battle that is ahead of us again the way we engage in spiritual warfare and it attracts that we do it in accordance to the word of God because again as we battle we will be judged on how we have engaged in our spiritual battle and that's why it is not good to be careful when it comes to the matter of, of engaging in spiritual battle the Bible is clear on how we are supposed to do it. And that's not my topic today, but I believe that God would open a door when we can share about the right way to engage in a spiritual battle. 
that at the judgment seat, we will not be the ones that will be saying, we cast demons in the name of the Lord. And he will look at us and say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Meaning, there is a way you handle demons and devils that can become our workers of iniquity. And there is the way you would handle them or handle that battle. And it becomes a work of righteousness. We will again be judged on how we have been able to engage in the work that God has called us into. Now, whatever other services we may offer in the house of God, he desires that it is pleasing and that is acceptable before the Lord. And that is why he invites us or he calls us co-workers together with him because we are not doing this alone. We are not doing it from, for ourselves, but we are doing it that we can be able to please the Lord. And if it is all about the Lord, then we need to do it as God desires us to do it. And that's why me and you are co-workers together with the Lord Jesus Christ so that he can lead us, he can instruct us, he can teach us, he can enable us, he can help us and prepare us to do our work that will please the Lord at the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ. Second Corinthians chapter number 6 and verse number 1, the Bible says, as God fellow workers, then we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of favor, I had you. In the day of salvation, I helped you. Behold, this is the time of favor. Now is the day of salvation. Many a times when we are in trouble, we desire that God saves us. And you know what? What we keep on promising him is that God, when you heal me, I will serve you. When you give me a wife, I will serve you. When you give me children, and I will serve you. I will give you my everything. I want to encourage us that only God can help us realize the service that is acceptable before him. And that is why today I invite you to allow Christ to be part of that which you want to do in your service in whatever manner you want to serve the Lord. Because it is the attribute of being co-workers together with him that enables us to do it in the right way. First Corinthians chapter number three and verse number eight, the Bible says, he who plants and he who waters are one in purpose and each will be rewarded according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. By the grace of God has given me, I laid the foundation as an expert builder and someone else is building on it. But each one must be careful how they build it or they whatever they build on it why that day will reveal it what day will reveal this it is the day of the judgment that will reveal all the things that we do and if we are doing them as part the desire of the lord it's okay i know everyone want to teach the sunday school everyone want to be in the choir everyone desires to be an usher but i want to uh, sound an alarm before you serve the Lord. There are things that he desires that you put into perspective because our service has an end view in perspective. Our service has the end result of what will become of our service. And we don't want to serve the Lord and our work burns at the judgment seat. I know you don't want to give money. I know you don't want to wake up early in the morning to go for a morning devotion. I know it is not your intention to serve the Lord diligently in singing and you know in that children department and then at that day God looks at you or Jesus Christ looks at you and call you worker of iniquity or a worker of iniquity. If your work will count, if my work will count, it is important that as I serve the Lord I understand that there is an end goal that God would want to us to be able to pay attention to. It's okay to have a zeal to move up and down and help the man of 
God. It's okay to desire to be a preacher and be given opportunities to speak. But I want to us to understand that everything that we do in the house of the Lord will meet judgment even at that day of our Lord Jesus Christ as he come back in the crowd with the angels to be able to reward each one of us in accordance to how we have done it. And you know what? God does not expect us to serve him in our own way or in our own style. Now, the challenge that we have today is that people have a zeal to serve God, but without the end goal in view. People are busy moving up and down, trying to please men, trying to look like you are busy doing something. You need to have an end goal. That is why people want to be preachers, yet live in covetousness. People want to sing in the choir, yet live in immorality. People want to be ushers in the church, yet be con men. People want to be Sunday school teachers, yet robbers. Have you asked yourself why we have so many preachers in the days where we are in and the gospel is all about money the gospel is all about prosperity the gospel is about here and now the gospel is about making wealth and living well here on earth oh my goodness may the lord help us that we understand that on that day of judgment we will be judged for the things that we have been able to do our service will be judged whatever we do will meet the eye of the lord and the judgment said and you know as he is writing to the members in the book of revelation he is saying i know your works everything that we do god knows god knows our hearts he knows our minds he knows our intentions and i pray that after listening to this message you will ask the lord to help you even as at the beginning of the year as new as it is that you will serve god in a manner that will please him. And because of the demands that are expected at the end of the journey, God desires to co-work in us so that he can work some things in our lives so that we are acceptable and we are able to set the right priorities in order and meet the required demands that that day he will look at us and say, welcome thou good and faithful servant enter into your master's rest. Before we serve him. God desires to work on us. God desires that our services may be reasonable, may be acceptable. They may be a righteous work that end at the judgment seat and makes us be clothed with the wedding garment on that day because the righteous work of the saints is a something as a righteous garment that we will wear on the wedding supper of the Lamb. Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse number 8 the Bible says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not from yourself. It is, it is the gift of God not by works so that no one can be able to boast for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. So when we get born again, we become God's workmanship. He needs to work in us before we engage in the work of the Lord. There are areas God would want to fix in you even as you continue engaging in the work of the Lord. Now three things that God wants from us before we serve him. Three things that God wants from me and you, even before we serve him. Number one, God wants to spend time with me and you, even before we run to serve him. He wants us to have a relationship with him, a relationship with the Father. Mark 3.13, the Bible says, And he went up on the mountain and called him those he himself wanted and they came to him then he appointed 12 that might be with him that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach when jesus was able to see the disciples he called them out and the first thing he wanted to do with them not to, for them to go and preach not for them to go and serve not for them to go and see he wanted to spend time with them over and over 
the scriptures show us that Jesus placed the highest priority of his life on spending time alone with the Father. His life reveals an intense passion of the presence of God. His heart longed and hungered to touch the heart of God. As we serve the Lord, it is good for us to understand that God wants to touch our heart. God wants to touch uh, our mind. You know what? We are so busy with the work of God and have forgotten the Lord of the work. We are so busy with the work of the Lord and have forgotten the Lord of the work. We are so busy. Most of us are traveling inside and out of the country. We travel more than we travel in the presence of God. Why We ask ourselves, why does revival tarries? You know, because we have left the place of prayer. We have left the place of loneliness. We have left that solitary place. We have left the place where we need to seek and search the Lord and ask him to speak to us, ask him to lead us, that the message we speak is coming from the heart of God. That the service that we give is coming from the presence of God. God does not desire us to serve him without him having imprinted his will, his message and his desire on our lives. Before the service, God wants us in his presence that we can get his mind, that we can get his heart, that we can be able to get his heartbeat, that we can can be able to get his message that we can be able to represent him accordingly. Jesus Christ had one message the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God today we have so many messages that are coming out of the pulpit why? Men of God and women of God, me being included may God forgive us we don't want to spend time in his presence that he can speak to us the message that he desires and the Bible is not talking anything else. It's all about the message of the kingdom. It's all about a land that is being prepared. It's all about a marriage supper that is being prepared for me and you. It's all about the preparation that we need to be able to engage ourselves in, in the journey of faith that we can do things in the right way. We have intermingled ourselves with the things of the world. We want to preach things that make us look relevant to the people of the world. We want and to preach messages that would cause us to win more members in our churches. So we have compromised like they did in the olden days. They wanted to be relevant with Babylon and allow the gods of Babylon in the altar. I am here to talk to us. May the Lord help us to go back on our knees that we can get the right message that God desires for his own people. He wanted to spend time with him. And look at this. If the Lord Jesus Christ spent time with the father how much more me and you the bible says in luke 6 12 one of those days jesus went out to mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to god Matthew 14, 23, after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. Oh my goodness. Mark 1, 35, very early in the morning, in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house and went off to solitary place where he Read. Jesus lived a life of prayer. He started every morning with communion with God or with the heavenly father. He ended every day with a close relationship with his father. At times he even spent the whole night in communion with his father. Jesus actually was in touch with his heavenly father all the time. And that's why he kept on saying, my zeal, my meat is to do the will of God. Man of God, worship leader, Asha, Sunday school teacher, are you doing it in accordance to the will of God? Media team, are you serving the Lord as he requires? The first thing that Jesus did each day was to fill the well of his being with the presence of his father. He then lived with heaven in mind 
all day long. Many have complained and murmured. Must we preach a gospel of tomorrow? Must we preach a gospel of the coming kingdom? Must we preach a gospel of those days? Yes, our Lord Jesus Christ's focus was on that day, was on pleasing the Father, was on the end on the with the view uh, in mind that caused him to be diligent and careful on the things he gave meaning, you know, in his own life. He manage his time by moving from being to behaving. He was able to move from the gnosis to the epignosis to the becoming and his doing was about doing the will of the father. This made his doing so effective as he received grace and power from the father. You know what? God has called us to spend time with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, in his humanity, he made prayer a necessity and a privilege. Are you praying? Have you made prayer a priority? Is it a privilege for you? The other thing that Christ needed us to do before even we serve is that we may be washed by him. He desires that we are washed. The children of Israel went through the Red Sea as a type of baptism. First Corinthians chapter number 10 is very clear that they went through the Red Sea as a type of baptism. And uh, we see again, then John chapter number 13, Jesus Christ washing the disciples' feet. And when coming to Peter, Peter says, there is no way you can wash my feet. And if you must, you need to do my whole body. And Jesus is telling him, if I do not wash your feet, then you have no part in me. In what? In the coming kingdom, in the end picture that was in view, the kingdom of our God. Our God desires that he co-washes continually. Our first salvation washes our whole body. Then after the whole body is washed, as we continue in the journey of our faith, he desires that he can continually wash us because of the things that we encounter and engage with in the journey of life that causes us to be sinful. He says in the book of first john chapter number one that if we say that we have no sin then we are making him a liar and because god understood the challenges of this world that is under the sway of the evil one he made a provision where me and you can be cleansed in the tabernacle of moses there was a brazen laver where the priest would cleanse themselves even as they move onwards to be able to enjoy the cleansing process or to be able to serve the Lord. The Bible says in 1 Peter 3 21 and this water symbolizes the baptism that now saves you also not the removal of the dirt from your body but the pledge of a clear conscience to our, towards God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Before we serve the Lord he desires that we are washed. He desires that we are clean. Ruth approaching Boaz and coming to the end of her journey from Moab to serving God. She was entreated by Naomi that she wash herself. She anoint herself and put on her best garment. That is in Ruth chapter number one and verse number three. Therefore, wash yourself, anoint yourself and put on your best garment. The priest in the olden days would wash themselves and the, the brazen labor before continuing with service. Christ spent time, you know, before the presence of God that he can be able to be washed. He was the water, but yet desired to be washed by the Father. God is not moved by our service if we are not clean. No wonder Jesus talking to the Pharisees, he calls them uh, the whitewashed tombs because they were clean outside and they were dead bones within their own inside washing the cup outside and not careful of the inside if you are going to serve the Lord we need to be washed by the waters of the word Matthew 23 15 the Bible says woe unto you scribes and Pharisees hypocrites for you travel land and sea to win a proselyte or a new convert and when he is one, you make him twice as a son of hell, as yourself. Can you imagine preachers who are sons of hell making others to be sons of hell because we have not yielded to the washing of the water of the word? God is calling us 
to a place where we need to be washed. God is calling us to a place whereby we need to be cleansed. God is calling us to a place whereby we need to be anointed. And you know what? That washing is so powerful because it is the washing and the anointing that makes our garments clean and allows God with that washing that we have done to ourselves and with the services that we have given from a clean heart, he turns them to garments of righteousness. Revelation chapter number 17. Again, we see the Bible talking about uh, the bride having been prepared herself and she is adorned with white linen, fine linen, which is righteousness or the work of righteousness. And the raiment is that which strikes the eye. It, ha it had to do something with the character. It indicated the character of the wearer. You know what? Previously, God is talking about a harlot in that text that attracts more than that which meets the eye, which makes her more conspicuous than is necessary on matters to do with the service of God. God desires that we do not use the things of this word to beautify ourselves, but we use the word of God so that our service is a service of righteousness, is a service that is coming from a binding in the presence of God. Is a service that is coming from a righteousness that has come from a loss of commitment of the things of this world as we commit ourselves to abide in the presence of God. God desires that again we anoint ourselves. We be smeared with the Holy Spirit. The physical oil in the Old Testament has been replaced by the Holy Spirit and the anointing at that particular time was meant to set up apart to empower and to protect and you know it was being rubbed on animals so that the insects that could make deep ways into the sheep skin and eat the skin or become a, a, a parasite would you know be rubbed off by the anointing I want us to understand that the anointing today has nothing to do with the physical oil it has to do all with the Holy Spirit and I have no problem with you using in your oil but let me tell you if you smear yourself oil without abiding in the presence of God without abiding in with the Holy Spirit without allowing the word of God to work in you let me tell you you will just be full of oil without an inner transformation that transforms your character out of the abiding and the dwelling in the presence of God the Bible says that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. So we see the Holy Spirit and the oil being used interchangeably. And how do we get filled of the Holy Spirit? Is by dwelling in the presence of God. Is by letting the word of God richly dwell in us that we can be able to teach and admonish one another with wisdom even as we sing psalms and spiritual songs and gratitudes to one another. My goodness, before you serve, you need to spend time with God for you to get the right message. You need to spend time with God for a proper cleansing that your service will count at the judgment seat of Christ. You also need to spend God allowing him to anoint you with the power of the Holy Spirit that that which you do is full of the passion that comes from the inner burning of a purged heart of a clean person that has actually spent time in the presence of God thereby doing works that are acceptable that are going to count at the judgment seat of Christ before you serve spend time with him wash yourself be anointed that on that day you will not be found naked because the end picture is the marriage supper is the kingdom is a bride and the bridegroom taking over from the incumbent ruler the devil and accomplishing God's desire from the beginning that the heavens and the earth will be reconciled so that his will here on earth will be done in heaven. May the Lord help us. May the Lord help me as even he helps you. That as we serve, we will not serve in futility. Bow your head from wherever you are and let's pray. Father, I pray that you will help us 
to embrace our assignment even as we desire to engage in your work, O oh God. Help us to spend time with you, that we can have the right message, that our character can be uh, washed, O oh God. Help us, my Father, to be able to wash ourselves with the water of your word, to spend long time in your presence, that we can be anointed by the Holy Spirit, that we may be passionate of the things of God, and our focus can be redirected again to the heavenly focus, because God, it is the end that counts from the beginning. We give you thanks and glory. I pray for my viewers. May your word convict all of us to do it diligently that our work will count even at the judgment seat. In Jesus' name. And we say amen and amen. Thank you so much for watching. May God help you. May God bless you. May you be committed to the washing. May you be committed to the spending time in the presence of God. May you be committed to the true anointing of the Holy Spirit which is spending time with the word of God. That word that actually is the source of the Lord Jesus Christ because Mary was expectant of the Holy Spirit. You can integrate the Holy Spirit and the word and you'll be amazed by the zeal and the passion and the diligence that you serve God with. May God bless you. Amen and amen.